Hi all, I have another interesting game to show you from the 1950 USSR Chess Championship. So this was a very important historical event just before the upcoming Bronstein versus Botvinnik World Championship match. Paul Kares was having a fantastic event in USSR 1950. And he played the young Tigran Petrosian. Paul Kares is widely regarded by many as one of the uncrowned kings of chess. One of the players who seem to deserve more than most the title of world chess champion but it eluded him at several points in history but uh in this ussr 1950 he actually won that tournament he won the championship let's see what happened against tigran petrosian e4 from paul cares e6 petrosian uses the french defense d4 d5 knight d2 and we have the guimard variation knight c6 I picked this line up myself from Watson's Dangerous Weapons in the French book. It's a very interesting line where the idea is not necessarily to try and hit d4, but e5 later, if you can provoke e5 and play f6, that's one of the ideas hitting the pawn chain at its head. But it seems here there's a very different treatment in this position, an intriguing one, nevertheless. White actually, for the moment, doesn't even develop uh, the knight. He plays actually c3, just securing the center like that. Um, in fact, knight f3, is there any problem? There's no real problem with d takes because it's still protected. d4 is not a problem there. So c3 is just another way of strengthening d4 though. But we have a, an intriguing idea here. Instead of knight f6, trying to provoke the center forward, we actually have f5. And your first thoughts might be, doesn't it kind of block in the bad bishop? On the other hand, it does force White's hand. What is he doing with this center? The f5 pawn could actually provide a better grip on e4. It seems in many respects a bit anti-positional. And to be fair, the year before, in the previous uh, USSR championship, Paul Kares completely murdered Petrosian's king's engine defense. Petrosian's positional play sometimes seemed a bit shaky, of course. I mean, he was younger, much younger, 19, 20 years old Petrosian. Uh, it looks a little bit on the positionally dubious side to do this. But okay, but how is it responded to? Does White want to actually uh, play e5, for example, or e takes? He plays actually e takes. And now we have bishop d3. Bishop d6, knight e2, and it seems the blockade square f4 seems a very natural place to try and maybe exchange off bishops later with bishop f4. Knight g e7, knight f3, and things are not so easy for white here after castling. Uh, for a start, if white didn't want to use bishop f4, then if he castles, say, then f4 for black seems playable here. That pawn is, is well supported and it seems as though then bishop g4 we're opening up the bishop and we've got good prospects prospects there but white's intention here after castling here is not to actually castle on the king side but actually showing that he might be interested in castling queen side so a very aggressive conception indeed to try and castle queen side here we have queen e8 so looking at that king indirectly discouraging any bishop f4s. Now bishop d2 preparing actually to castle queenside. A very exciting game position. Bishop d7, there is a battery here which might be useful later. Bishop's coming to b5 or a4 later when this knight moves. White castles, queenside. And now knight a5, so unveiling the possibility of either bishop b5 or bishop a4. We have bishop f4, it seems very logical to try and trade off this bishop. b5, yeah, with the idea potentially of either knight c4 or b4. And not minding the doubling of pawns, of course that might help black's control of e5 here, the double pawns. They wouldn't be that exploitable and they help control key squares. White actually avoided doubling the pawns and just played this rook d e1. And now the very aggressive b4 but uh, black's trying to clearly open up lines against the king now paul cares took on d6 and here actually 
c takes b4 white's got good enough control of c4 here the knight can't really go there it can just be taken uh, the knight goes back here hitting b4 and we have a very very sharp continuation if b5 immediately then knight b4 getting this bishop and rook c8 looks like a disaster for white is emerging as well as bishop takes b5 there so it's supported for the moment but now a5 b5 and petrosian does actually try and exploit white's king on the queen side here can you guess what he plays in this position if i give you five seconds to pause the video black to play okay knight b4 yeah he's trying to open up lines it does look fairly dangerous if this is uh taken and is the idea a takes because then isn't there possibilities for white's king escaping say with king here well this wasn't the idea the idea was an immediate putting the knight on c3 immediately with rook c8 so knight c3 a takes black is getting back his piece now the king does come to d2 queen f7 we have queen b3 b takes b takes white's king is still fairly safe this is still a balanced position in many respects rook b8 but black hasn't got any particularly bad pieces the bishop is actually doing something at least on this b5 pawn uh, we have rook e3 as though doubling rooks could be useful but also maybe a rook on the third rank is is potentially dangerous now this knight g5 is in the air it's extinguished with h6 rook h e1 this knight awkwardly goes back to c8 out of necessity getting out of any potentially nasty pins at least but now c4 preparing to uh, allow black to undouble pawns just to try and crack open some weaknesses black dare not take this with the bishop coming to skewer the queen there to pin the queen knight b6 is played now if c5 there's knight c4 check that's good enough for black that's very good we have c takes d5 which wins a pawn of course and also looks at e6 and, and c6 and there might be the possibility of an exchange sacrifice for example we have rook fc8 now an in infiltration this looks very scary queen f6 now here there's an interesting possibility that wasn't used by white and this may be reflective may or may not be reflective on the culture at that time in 1950 uh can you see what many commentators think is a very good move in this position by modern standards if i give you five seconds to pause the video what would you play here okay in this particular position uh it's been mentioned this exchange sack because then there's a possibility of put it entrenching a rook and potentially winning d6 later with advantage or maybe even target the f5 pawn with things like knight h4 or even g3 first there's no real rush but the exchange sacrifice is interesting and of course Tigran Petrosian himself master of prophylaxis not only influenced generations later with his prophylaxis uh, but also part of that was the art of the exchange sacrifice and here it seems this is a powerful exchange sacrifice that could have been played against him instead of this move h4 but the popularity yeah, of the exchange sacrifices in general increased over the years uh, i mean it was it was realized that when when you play an exchange sacrifice if it's for a pawn then you you start looking at the trend upwards after that and we have so many examples of successful exchange sacrifices more and more that the 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 notion of the exchange sacrifice is far more accepted nowadays than back then when maybe it's a little bit more on the materialistic side not really understanding the dynamics or not giving it the benefit of the doubt too much so cares played h4 seems a bit safer not to sacrifice the exchange in some ways
but um, he's losing out potentially on an upward trend of the position here we have rook a8 this rook comes to e2 and now f4 which provides possibilities like bishop g4 and bishop f5 black is activating this bishop a little bit more and taking away, away some squares from the king and here is where this goes a bit crazy now maybe Paul Kaz is slightly annoyed there's a prospect you know this bishop f5 would weaken c4 and black would start to be laughing off that if he can take c4 and get a knight into c4 black would be coming into the game there's things like rook a3 it would be extremely dangerous so we see this seemingly a little bit on the on the overkill side knight e5 this might not be the soundest knight sack yes it is dynamic of course it's it's creating two dangerous looking very dangerous looking uh central pass pawns should it be accepted well it is accepted d takes and it seems technically possible for black in this position to even play queen takes h4 there's there's interesting uh possibilities here uh but the more conservative queen e7 was played this discover check there's queen e6 at the moment it's not used at the moment the discover check we have rook e4 now rook a3 hitting that queen so if the check we can take the queen we have queen b2 Bishop f5 again this is what black really wanted to try and target d3 and he's targeting it with great effect now maybe Paul Kaz was very short on time it's this seems to be turning into a disaster for white this peace sack seems more speculative than sound now we have queen d4 and instead of taking the exchange here we see check which actually facilitates bringing the queen in now with queen a3 with great effect here threatening things like queen c1 checkmate rook c1 checkmate it's just a lot of pressure on white's position and white's king has been totally exposed petrosian has created a winning position which seems to be no defense for his king's safety paul Kaz's king's safety so a fascinating encounter one of only two games to be fair that Paul has actually lost in this tournament this was otherwise this was his championship Petrosian had lost quite a few but the, the games he did win were very very nice but uh, he was lower down the standings Paul has actually won the event and we should really look at some of his wins in this event to, to balance the books here uh, to see really what was going on around the time of 1950 but yeah some of the emerging talents but Paul Kaz was was there up at the top and we'll have to look at some of his games okay comments or questions on YouTube I hope you got something from that thanks very much